everyone, Kelly Callahan here at Algorand. I have the privilege today of sitting down with Archie Chaudhry and Brian Haney of Fortier Blockchain. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for joining me and taking the time. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, guys. Uh, give me, before we get into this, give me a little bit of your backgrounds. Brian, um, you're on my left. Why don't you go first? What's uh, Where'd you come from and how'd you get into this space? Uh, yeah, so uh, I was, I guess, at the early part of last year, finishing up a, a research fellowship at Stanford Law School, and uh, I wanted to make a little bit of money, so I ended up uh, joining the MIT Bitcoin Hackathon. And uh, when I was there, I uh, hopped into the Discord and made uh, a team with a uh, little uh, Green Goblin who turned out to be Darth Sidious, but that was Archie's tag, and we anonymously just linked up and became a team for the hackathon and uh lo and behold we ended up uh, winning so after that we uh we got a grant from the algorand foundation and uh we've been working hard building on the algorand network ever since awesome that's amazing and archie give me a little bit of your background yeah so well i was um so last year i was a, a freshman in college so i uh, was taking actually a graduate level course in blockchain and cryptocurrencies so and uh just one Friday evening or one 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 week, uh, my TA for the class was like, "Hey, I'm a, uh, I'm doing this hackathon and at MIT, and if anyone else wants to join, go ahead." So so I signed up and I because I had nothing else to do that weekend. I was like, "Why not? Why not? Why not do something fun?" And I <laughs> ended up joining uh, joining the Discord and uh, seeing uh, Brian and meeting Brian, whose uh, Discord tag was Green Rex, his little green alien. <laughs> and, uh, we teamed up, and uh, the, our project for the MIT Hackathon was building a decentralized autonomous organization, and we uh, we ended up winning first place in that. And since then, applied to now grand grand, and um, and here we are with Fortier. And have amazing, amazing. So this was the this was the MIT Hackathon earlier this year, right? Early in Great. So you're six eight months in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Fortier was actually formed in um, late June, early July. So it's actually, you know, the actual work on Fortier has only been like three, four months. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So you're very early, very new at the beginning stages of that. That's great. Uh, tell uh, tell us a little bit about Fortier. Like what um, what is it at the highest level and, and sort of what are you doing with it? Yeah, so Fortier builds blockchain infrastructure for uh, on on different blockchains not specifically on algorand because we think algorand is the best most secure and fastest blockchain and um right now we're focusing on building decentralized governance software to help uh decentralized autonomous organizations and just groups of people in general reach governance in a decentralized manner and to facilitate that we built choice coin which is an open source algorand standard asset to help facilitate decentralized voting and um Democratic participation. How did you end up on this as an idea? So originally, our we had a bunch of different ideas kind of floating around, as you do at like any sort of like startup or any sort of high like uh, I guess when we we're first starting out, we went from DeFi to um, to you know neural networks, smart contracts, and I guess our and while we we're still building in those different fields as part of our blockchain infrastructure overall. As part of the grant, we've also done research on smart contracts and on artificial intelligence. We kind of focused on governance because we felt it was a real problem to be addressed in the blockchain community. And we also felt there was something that blockchain could really help fix in the world as a whole. Centralized systems lead to you know, voter suppression. Centralized systems lead to a lack of trust in when people are participating in voting processes, thus leading them to not participate. And we felt it was a real application that blockchain, especially the algorithm blockchain, could be used to help solve. Amazing, that's great. And for those that are, you know, I, you know, I know the the DeFi and some of the uh, decentralized applications are really starting to, we're starting to see more and more of them on Algorand, right? Um, and as those become more and more of a reality, like walk me through a specific example of how ChoiceCoin on part of for, part of the Fortier model, how that would be um, implemented into someone's decentralized application that they needed feedback or governance or want to take a poll or something like that? How would, how would it work? 
Yeah, so for a decentralized autonomous organization, or in, in reality, any sort of decentralized organization doesn't have to be autonomous. In order to set up their governance, they will um, they'll log on to the decentralized decision software. That's kind of the software model we use that incorporates ChoiceCoin. And they will start a new proposal. They'll input the amount of total number of tokens they have, the different number of decisions, and automatically there will be an appropriate number of algorand addresses and an appropriate number of proposal tokens created. And then all of the constituents in the in the DAO who have you know, a stake in the DAO can then go into the decentralized decision software and start voting in for the different proposals. And these votes will be recorded directly on the blockchain through asset transfers of the voting token that was created. So for example, if um, a DAO on Algorand, such as Tiny Man, which is a DAO, wanted to incorporate voting, they could, they could have, they'll have three different proposals, and each one of those proposals will have an X number of Tiny Man choice proposal one asset based on what the constituents voted for. And then once the, all the votes are tallied, the address with the highest number of tokens obviously have the most votes and wins. And um this is a great and well why the reason we picked that model is because we felt it was really important for voters to know that their voters their votes were being counted accurately and that they could see them on the blockchain and does this have to be put into place right at the onset like at the in the initial phases of a decentralized application or can it be inserted as like an additional later uh, additional layer on top at a later point yeah i i think any decentralized organization could move some most and i've talked about this before most decentralized organizations use like discord or like some sort of online poll polling software like where like a bunch of members have gathered and just make decisions using like maybe a thumbs up icon on a forum or something and a model organization could easily transition from that to using this software which is decentralized and on the blockchain so right. it's as it's as seamless of a transition as possible Got it. And what a central, what a you know a centralized organization. I'm trying to think of an, an example, right? But would they be able to leverage the capabilities as well? Or okay. Yeah, one of our one of our goals was to have like you know even a, like for example a corporate shareholder meeting where you know people yeah. with different shares vote on proposals of which way to move the company forward based on the stake they have in the company. It's kind of it's going to be they're going to be able to leverage it as well. Got it. Amazing. Um, Brian, with your background, uh, have you patented some of the stuff that you all have worked on? Uh, yeah, so we've uh, filed three patents in our first three months. Um, I think that's one of the really great things that we're doing as part of our relationship or partnership with the Algorand Foundation is we've actually uh, licensed most of our patents under uh, the Apache open source software license. So one of the things that really allows ChoiceCoin to stand out is we have a lot of developers all around the world building on the ChoiceCoin GitHub every day. And that's because those patents are open source under the Apache license. Amazing. How many people do you have using um, ChoiceCoin right now? Do you know? Uh, I think 9,700. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a majority of them actually got the choice going not through trading for it on Tiny Man, but for actually, from actually participating in some very various participatory rewards programs we had, such as GitHub contributions, as Brian mentioned, and uh, democratic participation. Awesome, that's amazing, great. Uh, and then you are building this. Is it is it multi chain or is it right now on out? You're starting on Algorand and then expanding from there. What's the model for for blockchain layer one platform you're doing this on? Yeah, so we're starting on Algorand, and um, if 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 it be required, we will we might move to multi chains in the future. But right now, we're essentially focusing on Algorand because hey, Algorand's great. We're not biased. <laughs> yeah, I think Algorand is the best opportunity to build it. It's the fastest, most secure, um, and I think it's got the most room to grow within the space right now. I think particularly with now, now the launch of Tiny Man and having all these additional Algorand standard assets, um, I think financially this is the best place to be. Yeah. I mean, and also it's just like the community is just so incredible. I mean, from the day one, from, you know, starting in the hat, yeah. you know, <laughs> people from like Fabrice from the Algorand Foundation. Is so and Addy, cool. yeah, they're incredible. And getting to work with the best developers and minds in the world every day is an awesome opportunity for us that we really appreciate. Most people from Inc. and the foundation have just been so helpful. We're, we're, Barron, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
how ta, ta, so ta, so you guys you both built this yourselves but you're both developers you built this from the ground up um uh resources documentation the community you've said a little bit about that now uh, how what would you say to somebody who is newer to blockchain and is looking to get started and doing something what would you know knowing that you came out of a um a university hackathon at mit uh what would you what would your um suggestions be to someone that's new to the space that wants to get involved uh, I would say the best way to learn is just to start building and interacting. So like if someone wants to get into the blockchain space, and I think Algorand is a great for doing that because you know, there's so many different community run projects. Like we've leveraged the Algorand Python SDK, which is like a software development kit specifically built for Algorand in Python. And this helps because that makes developing on Algorand significantly you know, more streamlined and easier than say developing on Ethereum where you know you have to get into Solidity. So it's a lot more simple. I would say like the biggest tip I can give is just find something you really enjoy, start building, and then if you get stuck, ask questions because someone will always be there to help you. Just also really check out ChoiceCoin. We have awesome developer rewards programs or ways for people to get involved. If you write a letter to your congressman about blockchain, we'll give you a uh, choice coin. If you uh, work on developing or implementing decentralized decisions, we'll give you choice coins. So a lot of really great opportunities there too. That's amazing. So you're encouraging activism. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's great. Yep. And so, yeah. And so just for people getting involved in 40, I guess that's a great call to action, Brian, for people that want to get a little more hands on. What about some of the decentralized applications that are launching on Algorand? How do they um, think about, it, you know, engaging with 40 or what's sort of the call to action there for that group? Yeah, I think definitely if a decentralized organization or application if wants to implement decentralized decisions in their software, uh, they can we're, we're always available just uh, on our website there's an email you can contact us and we're planning on uh launching this software around end of this year start of next year q1 2022 around and yeah i mean if, if your organization wants to move from like that centralized clunky model to having a streamlined decision process i definitely think you know we can help with that not biased but we can help with that uh, that's great that's great and are you doing is are you doing do you do code audit and do you do reviews and all that leading up what's left for you for the rest of the year before you launch yeah we have to we have to get our software launched on first on testnet then do maybe a security audit to make sure everything is working properly and then we'll launch the mainnet probably the start of next year that's kind of the plan we're actually so the we're going to first the choice point itself the choice in communities also it's open source and it's also a DAO. so we're going to start off by using decentralized decisions for choice point yeah. itself and people within the choice and community will be able to vote and um and, and that, that's that will be kind of proof and it was actually an initiative called uh, choice charities where a certain amount of choice will go to a chari charitable organization and that's what people will be voting on for the first uh, iteration of the vote and then they'll move to any decent judge should be able to use it. That is amazing. This is great. Listen, Brian, Archie, great work. Amazing stuff going on at Fortier. I'm glad we took a little bit of time to sort of put a spotlight and focus on what you're doing and what's coming from the two of you. I think this is fantastic. And thanks for taking the time to share. Thank you so much, Kelly. So much for having us. Really appreciate it.